Well, welcome to yet another holiday episode here on the Insomnia Project. You know, the podcast that we hope you never get to the end of. Of course, these are our holiday episodes, so some people are really enjoying them, finding them to be a lovely accompaniment to their holidays. Some people are finding them a warm hug around the holidays if they can't be with their families. However you find it, we're happy you're here. I'm Marco Timpano. And I'm back. I'm Amanda. Amanda, (laughs) this episode's coming a little bit later than I would have anticipated, but I hope you enjoy it. Nonetheless, uh, we were playing secret elves going around uh, dropping off some some gifts to our friends uh, today. We were ringing doorbells and running away. That's what we do best. We do that once a year. At least. I did it last year, too, with Christmas cards. Did you know that? No. Yeah. The Christmas cards, I was late in getting them out last year, so the our our people that are kind of close to us, I put little candy canes. I, I did a little ornament and candy canes on the card and like and put them in people's doors. Oh. Yeah. Sweet. Saves on the stamp. Yes. I used that savings for candy canes. <laughs> nice. So speaking of candy canes brings me to the topic of today's episode. Mm. Today's episode is the gingerbread episode. Can we broaden this to all holiday treats, or is that no, just is too much? Gingerbread only. Okay. I know that you were not happy that Starbucks, one of your favorite places to get a latte, did not have the gingerbread lattes anymore, right? Well, I don't. One of my favorite places to get a latte. Let me just put a caveat around sure. that. The thing is, Starbucks is like, you know what they say about pizza? There's different kinds of pizza, and they can all be good. Sure. Like, Napolitano pizza is its own thing. Right. Versus, uh, well, I'll talk about it. My old company, it would only be known to certain people. But like a Chicago style or a... a... Well, that's that's its own thing, too. But, like, when I grew up, it was Domino's. But for seven years, I worked for Pizza Pizza here. Anyway, the point is, a sort of more... Um, easy to get, mass produced kind of pizza. Sure. And I mean that in a loving way because, again, I worked in marketing for that company for a long time. Um, they can both be good and they're both very different, but they both fall under the heading of pizza. So I say all this to say I don't know that Starbucks lattes are my favorite lattes. Okay. Like I'd rather get something a little more Italian, but their drinks are their own world right. of drink. Nonetheless, you weren't happy that they got rid of the gingerbread. Furious. Okay. Furious. Uh, I walked in all excited. Holiday drinks are back. This is exciting. Uh, You remember the faux scare over the red cup a few years back. That's right. That's right. It was all made up by a religious radio host. Whatever. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, like it was never a thing. But anyway, um, and they don't have an eggnog latte, and they don't have a gingerbread latte. Mm. And I cried, oh, the humanity, what have you done? Why would you do this? Who can I talk to? Who do we blame? Right. Who did this to me and why do the Starbucks gods hate me? (laughs) So, And to be honest, I haven't gone nearly as much as I would normally go this time of year. Because of that. Well, there you go. They lost a customer. The gingerbread latte was like the latte. Like I would get them, I would get them iced. Right. I would get them not iced. Now, do you like gingerbread? I love it. But you love the taste of it. A ginger, like I a, do, a but gingerbread I lo- person, man like or woman or other? I like a soft gingerbread. I don't necessarily oh, okay. like the crack, which I don't, I guess is sort of not the traditional version, but I I have bonded teeth, so anything so, hard I try to avoid. <laughs> okay, so it's not because you necessarily like it better, but it's because it's gentler and kinder on your teeth. And I like a chew. Okay. Like a, I like a chewy cookie. I like a chewy gingerbread. But okay. that's kind of harder to find. Do you like it when they put a little piece of ginger on your gingerbread cookie if you go to a store to get them? No. Okay. No, I like a soft gingerbread person, man or woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they're men. but uh, no, They can I, be whatever you want them to I, be. I guess, but we call them gingerbread men. I mean, that's – I don't really – you don't really hear gingerbread woman much, but – well, I say gingerbread, gingerbread people. Do you? Now I do. Sure I do. Okay. Well, as a kid, there was a consignment shop in the town, one of the towns that bordered my town. And so my mom, 
I don't know, every few months or once a month, we would go to the consignment shop and get rid of our old clothes or whatever, old dresses and things that I had grown out of and my sister had grown out of. And uh, I guess because, you know, I had a brother and my mom was like, okay, that's it. We don't need any more of these girly things. And so I loved going to the consignment shop. I see. Not just for my love of thrifting clothes that I guess probably started at a young age, but... Because there was a bakery next door, oh. and it always smelled like gingerbread. That's one of the things I have a problem with with regards to, you know, air fresheners and plug-ins and mm-hmm. oils that smell like food, in particular oh, gingerbread. Really? Yeah, like you can get a candle, especially around the right. holidays, that's a gingerbread candle. You don't like it? No, because then I, if you light that candle, all I want to do is find the source and eat it. Right. And so it makes me hungry for gingerbread. That's fair. So I remember a friend of mine had bought some of those plug-in things that, that make your car or your home smell like mm-hmm. whatever scent you want. Mm-hmm. And he had bought the gingerbread, and he's like, I threw it out the window because I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. It was Jeff, actually. Mm. Jeff um, from the Hanukkah episode, in case you want to write your letter to people who litter. Um, no, he just <laughs> said it metaphorically, but but he said he couldn't, he couldn't because it made him hungry. And apple pie is one of the worst. Gingerbread and apple pie scents are one of the worst for me. Not holo- holiday related, but plug-in related. Okay. Um, our dear friend Lois, has she been on the podcast? She has. If you want to listen to her podcast, she talks about quilting. I think it was oh, in yes. our second yes. or third year. So Avid you have quilter. to go back. Yeah. Uh, and she a- quilted us beautiful um, holiday mats. Yes, she did. That uh, are reversible. One side it's like uh, penguins mm-hmm. with with Santa hats on it, and the other one is like cardinals in a in a in a beautiful scene. Yeah, like the reversible. Yeah, she's amazing. She, she quilted is. us luggage handles so that we could wrap them around, which is great because we have black luggage. So you'd like to have like uh, something identifier, and they're like quilted little luggage handles that you wrap around the handle. So that when it comes off the carousel, you can spot it. Yeah. Yeah. None of this has anything to do with plugins, though. Okay. But um, when she moved into her home many years ago, oh, uh, she had a cold that she could not shake for months and months and months. And she kept saying, I don't know what it is. I think I'm getting better. And then I, I just can't shake this cold. Finally, and she went all through the house because she has allergies. Yes, she does. She is quite... Uh, she's a very allergic, like you can't wear a perfume near her kind of thing. Yeah, she has a scent allergy. She always has had. Anyway, um, so she thought, well, they must, they just moved in. So she's like, there must be some type of allergen in this house, maybe, but she couldn't find it. So she thought, no, I'm just, I have a cold. Finally, uh, maybe six months in, she had to get somebody to come do the duct work. And the people that lived there before had put these plug-in things or sticky, the sticky ones. I don't know if those are called plug-ins, but the sticky ones in the vents of the house. So she was breathing in these allergens and they were causing her to feel like she had a cold for almost like, I think it was more than six months. Of course, because whenever you turn on the ventilation, whether it be hot or cold. When the air conditioner went on, she'd have a cold. When the heat went on, she'd have a cold. So finally... Uh, she got rid of them and then it cleared up. So there's my plug in, my holiday plug in story. Nice. Well, I'm going to get back to gingerbread. Okay. And I'm going to get back to one of my favorite things around the holiday, and that is the gingerbread house. Okay. Or house, however you like house. to say it. House. You heard my Canadian house, house there. House. How do you say it, American? House. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's a, how we say wow. it. Wow. How do the Brits say it? Uh. Abode. <laughs> Does a Brit say house? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm not going to... I watch so much location, location, lo- and relocation, relocation, relocation. House. House on the Thames. There I don't know. Go. So, <laughs> anyways, back to my gingerbread Carry house. Carrie, take away. I, Amanda watches a lot. <laughs> I watch so much we, British television. We actually have a channel where we just watch British um, uh, shows that that focus on repairing or building. British or, TV shows are the ivy drip in our arm at all times yes, at this point. Fair. Like the last couple of years, it's just been a steady diet of British TV. And we should just move it. there. We would know everybody. It's true. Okay. So for me, the gingerbread house has always been something that I've loved. Now, over the years, I've realized that 
putting the gingerbread house together is the most difficult part. <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard. So you can get pre-made gingerbread houses where the structure is made and you just decorate it. And okay. that's that's where I go to play. I want to talk about the levels of making the ginger of gingerbread construction. Okay, sure. So level one. This is and I'm I'm gonna say level one is the hardest of levels. Really? Okay. I don't know. I'm doing it this way. All right. So let's say level one is the hardest of levels. You make your gingerbread from scratch. Oh, sure. Of course, yes. You make your icing from scratch. You make it all from scratch. Yes. Like they would do in Bake Off. Right. (laughs) To be British. But you would make it all from scratch, and then you would assemble it that way. So that would be level one. Level two would be you'd buy it all pre-made but not pre-assembled. Yes, fair. And so then level three, which is what you're talking about, is you're literally, you're buying, it's like paint your own pottery, but it's like decorate your own gingerbread house. Like they give you the gingerbread house all put together and then you can put your icing and your right. m and or thing. whatever. This is my belief. If you're going to buy one that's sort of assemble yourself, mm-hmm. it's the same house. It's not like you've designed it to be right. your own structure, right? <laughs> this so is my it's like, gingerbread Miami townhouse. Right. It's This is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is my... If you were making your own gingerbread house, then I would make a Franklin Lloyd style mid-century. Frank Frank Lloyd Wright? Franklin Lloyd Wright, yeah. What did I say? Franklin Lloyd. That's what his friends call him. (laughs) So I would make a Franklin Lloyd Wright style mid-century. Is his name Franklin? Was it? Frank Frank Lloyd Wright. No, but it might be Franklin. I don't know. I don't know. You got me off my my thought pattern now. You would make? A a gingerbread mid-century house in the style of Frank Lloyd. Lloyd Wright. That'd probably be easier to assemble because if it was a bit wonky, it wouldn't matter. It would look intentional. Like if you had a jagged gingerbread, you know, roof kind of jetting out that didn't quite fit into the wall, you could just make it intentional. Well, I don't know about that. I think Franklin Lloyd Wright was was uh, was really like precise. And it was Franklin Lloyd Wright. You made me question myself. Well, I've, I've only ever heard Frank Lloyd Wright. You have? I don't know now. Now I'm questioning myself. Okay, so he, my whole point behind that was not <laughs> was not to debate the man's name, but I would do a style that that speaks to me or a Tudor style home. But who has the time to do that? I don't. People, people, some have people. The time. And if you, who has the time to do anything in this life? Oh, you're right. You're right. You know, who has the time to make a podcast? Us, apparently. Yeah. Listen, you're not wrong. <laughs> but here's my thing. That's not the part that I enjoy the most about gingerbread homes. So. The part that I enjoy enjoy is the decoration of the gingerbread home, house, Mm -hmm. abode, whatever you want to call Mm -hmm. it, structure. Mm -hmm. The landscaping, if you will. But more than just the landscaping. Putting the icicles on the roof is one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. And placing certain candies on the structure itself to represent various things. Really a lot of fun. You do a great job because you're very precise with, with the shingles and mm-hmm. like everything is properly spaced out. It's true. I am not as good at that. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. I'm very artistic and so it comes naturally to me. I'm artistic. Sure. I am, just yeah. not in an art way, but. In a what way? I'm not. I'm artistic in that I'm a performer. Okay. That I'm a writer. Sure. That I create. I'm a creator. Sure, That's sure. artistic. I don't. I, I'm not. Well, you, you looked at me like. But when it comes to a gingerbread, challenge, what when am com- I an accountant and I didn't know about it? No, I'm just saying when it comes to gingerbread houses, <laughs> this is where we're at. <laughs> that not, I'm not art. That you're better than me is is you just said it in a way and kind of put your nose in the air. Well, yes, okay, I did. Okay, you you. I will go on record. You're a better gingerbread house maker than me, uh, but I have a lot of heart in my gingerbread it's true. structures. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's very true. So, now, here's the thing. And home, even gingerbread home, is where the heart is. It's true. You're not wrong. Not where the precise shingle is. That's not the saying that they embroider. Home is not where the precisely laid icicle is. Oh, I would love a T-shirt that said that. <laughs> Home, <laughs> home is where. <laughs> if someone could embroider, home is where the nicely placed icicle is <laughs> for me. I would love that. Okay, so I will say this: it's true. You may not be the most gingerbread astute artist. Uh, this is you are gingerbread classist. No, I'm not. Yes, I'm, you, I, you are. Let me finish this last statement. Gingerbread you, tenements over here. <laughs> but you, but you are the gingerbread queen. 
Why? Let me tell you why. Tell me why. So I have a love for gingerbreads, right? And I have loved, I, I love the taste of gingerbread and gingerbread houses and gingerbread people, whether they be man, woman, other, whatever, gingerbread dog, polar bear, whatever. So Amanda has seen me decorate a multitude of gingerbread homes. And then one year for my birthday, she went to a kind of really fancy um, pie dessert kind of shop. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that place? A very, an upscale, whimsical, fanciful cafe. That made. And bakery. And bakery. Cafe yeah. and bakery. Yeah. And it was called Madeline's. Madeline's Cherry. I thought it was Madeline's Pie in the Sky, but no, no that's Wanda's Pie. No, in the it's sky. it's Madeline's Madeline. Cherry Pie. Cherry it's chocolate pie, I think it was called. Chocolate. I don't remember now. Oh, no, well, it's not there anymore. It's not there, and the owners were fantastic, and what they did. And what, we should tie it in because we talked about I will, baking. I will, show. yeah, okay. I was going to. So, Amanda arranged it for a private room with five pre-made gingerbread homes. Four, I believe. Was four. it five? No, it was four. Yeah, you're I think it was right. Four. four. And me and three of my closest friends, including Amanda, got to decorate the homes with all the accoutrements anybody could want at our fingertips. So because they are a bake shop, they had everything. Yeah. And so it was like it was like you have the pick of the litter. When you get a kit you get a couple of those gummy gummy bears and you, you get a handful of little like red and green balls yeah and it's like it's never the what icing I, you don't really want to it's eat never it. what i want i always want chocolate based things and i want yeah. sprinkles or sparkle spring, sprinkles and i want little tiny stars and i want chocolate balls and i want fun and i had everything there and so we spent 2 hours yeah decorating these professionally made, so not not, you know, factory processed. They know. tasted fantastic. Did we have to assemble them too, or were they already assembled? That they were already assembled, they were. ready to go. Oh, okay, but with, homemade by that bakery. By that bakery with different ice icing, and they were serving us like whatever hot cocoa yes, we wanted. We had lattes, not we Starbucks, eat, good ones. Good lattes, yeah. and you could coffees eat, and teas, yeah. and you could get alcohol in it, whatever we wanted. It was we a just very spent, fun time. We just spent the day, and we all did our own gingerbread homes, and they were delightful. That was such a fun day. So, all that to say, the owner of that shop, which I can now confirm because I looked it up, is called <laughs> Madeline's Cherry Pie and Ice Cream, which used to be on Bathurst, is no longer there, sadly. But the owner of that place is the judge on the Canadian baking show, mm -hmm. Kyla. Um, uh, I believe it's Kyla Canali. Canali, that's right. Yeah. And she's fantastic. And she had set that all up so many years ago. So amazing. She was so lovely to deal with. And they were so lovely. And I'm glad that even though that well, our favorite place was closed... Uh, and we had another birthday sort of thing that happened there for our friend Dale's birthday. That's right. Yeah. It was such a, a secret agent birthday, and I was stationed as a secret agent there. <laughs> and didn't she have to eat the... She had... We I had the clue under the slice of cake, so she had to eat the cake to reveal the clue. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We made her go all around the city mm -hmm. to different locations, uh, different locations she loved yeah. to, to uh, find the clues of where her party was going to be. Mm -hmm. Anyways... We made those uh, gingerbread homes and had such a great time. And everyone got to take home the most delicious gingerbread home I've ever had. It's true. That was the gingerbread house to, to uh, the gingerbread house to end all gingerbread houses. It's true. I guess now, that's what I'm trying to say. One of my friends on Facebook said, "What am I supposed to do with a gingerbread home after the holidays?" And eat I'm like, it. Eat it. I guess there's people who don't eat them. Well, that's the thing. If you get one of those kits, right. They're edible, but do you really want to eat it? We've we've done it before. We've had one sort of sitting, and then we'll like gnaw away it, and kind of half the roof goes off, and then we're like, "Are you done with this? I'm done with this," and then off it goes. I will dip that cardboard structure <laughs> into my coffee <laughs> and eat it like it's my job. Yeah. But it, I think it would be so great if you did like the whole make your own gingerbread, like actually did it all from scratch. That sure. would be amazing. And and there are people that do that. My cousins 
uh, my cousin and his wife every year will put on Facebook their two homes to their two gingerbread houses, mm-hmm. option one and option two, and they won't tell people wh- who designed what, and they'll just ask their friends and Your, family. Which cousin is this? My my cousin Franco and his wife. Oh, really? Yeah. They oh, I do guess I'm not year. friends with them on Facebook. That's um, really funny. I just saw it, so I was like, oh, and um, every year people will pick option one or option two, and I usually write a dissertation of the one I love, <laughs> and then I really lambaste the one I hate. Oh wow! Yeah, because I think I feel like that's my duty. You right? really pick sides. Yeah, really re- strong and wrong. <laughs> strong and wrong, bright <laughs> and right. And I think one year I offended his wife. Oh really? Well, because I said well, it's not structurally sound. It looks terrible. Who would live in that? Who would actually want to eat offended? That? Well, maybe you're I not talking about their it. homes. It's not like you're. It's saying, true. It's true. Here's my home, and my wife's home, like actual homes. Can I, you imagine? <laughs> I think people that I didn't know started to pile on and say. What's wrong with you? Blah blah blah. And so they had to defend oh, me. Oh no! So this year I've been nicer, and I just said, mm. "I am. I'm not." You didn't alone. tell me about any of this. this I was. was I was ago. spared of this controversy. Yeah, but not that. I mean, how long have they been married? Well, they've been well, married no. a while. It yeah. may, this might have been three years ago. But yeah, that was a gingerbread controversy. <laughs> I hope it's cleared up. I love. I I do love a gingerbread. I'd love to know what our listeners think. We've had a lot of listener response. Do you li- do you like being somewhere warm? I do like for being Christmas? somewhere. I do like. Well, yes, I do. But I also love a white wonderland for for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Like being outside. That the other day when I took that that little video, it was it was magical. Mm-hmm. And we go down this one road in Toronto, which we call the Shim Sham. Which it's not the name of the road. But the name? Should I say the name of the of road? Of course. It's the Rosedale Valley Road. So if you want to look on a map or on a Google map, you can see what it looks like. And it's all tree-lined. And it, 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 it's, a, it's this extraordinary, for those who don't know Toronto, or maybe those who do. We actually didn't know about it for a long time. But it's this, it's this gorgeous tree-lined, forested, somehow, uh, shortcut. Yeah, it's like shortcut a- in the middle of the city. So it does, it's, you're, so everywhere else around it is city. Right. You know, skyscrapers, condos, et cetera. But it is this beautiful tree-lined, I mean, forest. It's true. And it goes on for quite a while. And it it takes you from the sort of mid-northwest end of the city and spits you out at the bottom of the southeast end of the city. True. It's amazing. It's really – In like 10 minutes. It's really pretty. And if there were to be a gingerbread house in the city, Hmm. you would find it there. That's how quaint and beautiful that area is. There is is a house. There's only three or four houses in there because I think it's protected land probably. But there's a few houses that I think got in there before that was a thing. And one of them is used to be the studio for the group of seven. It's now a private home. Now, if you don't know the group of seven, we probably don't have time to talk about we who don't, they were. Okay. Anyway. We'll talk about They're in, famous Canadian painters. We'll talk about them in – in the next season, so they can look forward to that in the new year. We'll sure, talk about yeah, the group we'll do a Group of Seven, of seven yeah. episode. Um, but for those who do know the Group of Seven, it's actually someone's private home that they bought, which is like, it's really a Canadian landmark. And it used to be a studio for one of them, right? For all of them. Okay. That's why it's so, it wasn't just one of them. It was built to be their city studio. Wow. And there is a little parkette called the, or a little park there. That's called the A.Y. Jackson Park. No, the Lauren Harris Park. The Lauren Harris Park. That's right. Yeah, different. Th- again, there's seven of them. So yeah. Well, uh, well, we'll talk about them another time. But yeah, anyway, it season. is a Rosedale Valley Road is beautiful any time of the year. But we drove it's down certainly it. magical right now. Yeah, we drove down it with all the as it was snowing, with snow on the trees. It's gorgeous. It was gorgeous. There's a really old little cemetery there too. That's really mm-hmm. really picturesque, and it was it was just magical. It was magical, and it was yeah, it was definitely snowing pretty right. hard. Before this episode ends, what's key for you when you're decorating a gingerbread house? Okay, texture, same okay. as any decorating. Okay. Layering and textures. <laughs> okay. So, you know, if I have gumdrops in one area, then I'm mm. going to want a flat Smarty or M&M on another surface. I see. I also like for a house, any house to have the embodiment of the people that live in it. So movement in life. So I would like 
in my gingerbread house or around it, gingerbread people, gardening, laying on the snow, living their best life. Okay. That. But what do, are the people made of gingerbread themselves? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not little figurines. I know. I don't like it when you get yeah. like a, a figurine that's kind of chocolate wrapped in foil and then you use that. Yeah. No, no. No. Uh, and I also like, I really take care with my windows. I want the window panes to look like windows. I want, if you can, to see the people inside. I like to put a wreath on the door. Mm -hmm. Icicles are important to me. Mm -hmm. I like to use a lot of chocolate-based candy on it. Okay. Yeah, you like a chocolate gingerbread house. I'm more of a candy. My favorite thing on a gingerbread house is the gumdrop. See, that's my least favorite. See, I love gumdrops. Because the texture of that doesn't match well with the gingerbread house itself, I think. I heartily disagree. Can I do a shout out to another baker who does amazing gingerbread houses? Of course. Arlene Lott of Arlo Designs just posted a gorgeous gingerbread house that she did actually for a move uh, for a TV show called Sex Life, I believe. Okay. On Netflix, and um, she she does amazing work, and we can attest to it. You you should have her as a guest on the podcast. I will. I will. Yeah, she's so amazing. She's we we just sh- love her. You should follow her on Instagram. If you Arlo, A-R-L-O, designs. But anyway, she, yeah, she has a, she's been doing Yule Logs as well. Some oh beautiful God. Yule Logs. A Yule Log? Like chocolate Yule Logs. Do oh. you like a Yule Log? I, I think, yeah. I love a good Yule Log. I mean, I don't know if I know exactly. I thought a Yule log was actually a log that goes in the fire. It is, but well, the is that what they, you're talking about? Or? Well, no, I'm talking about the, the, you're the talking dessert. About the dessert. Yeah, and but the dessert is what chocolate. It can be chocolate. It can be um, like I, f- I feel like it's a roulant, so they like roll it oh, okay. with cream inside, yeah. and it can it, traditionally I think it is chocolate. Yeah, but you can make it with like a coffee. Hers is like surrounded by like a woodland, so there's like little mushrooms around. It's so gorgeous her work is gorgeous but yeah she could make a mean gingerbread house man like actually she made like in a gingerbread like apartment building oh that's cool yeah it was like people were living there best, best like it looked like ha- carrie bradshaw's life. brownstone like it was it was like it was several people living around there you know people going shopping there was a lot going on uh, i can't wait to go see it <laughs> anyway. well however you make your gingerbread houses people or just your lattes i hope you really enjoy your ginger this year hashtag team gumdrops hashtag icicle city Um, take me down take me down to that icicle city thank you guys so much for listening please tell your friends about our podcast amanda but we've got to record more me and you okay okay i'm just telling you I have cleaning to do. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll need one for tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, tune in tomorrow. And if you're still with us and awake, thank you for staying all this time. And if you're not, I'm glad. Rest well, pleasant dreams, and let all your gingerbread sheep jump well. Until tomorrow, we hope you were able to listen, enjoy, and maybe even sleep. Sleep.